That is so awesome. Oh, there's a little spike for the... Oh, yeah. See, and the, the millimeter just had a spike of like two something. I'm Greg Larson at the Indiana State Sanatorium. Uh, the Indiana State Sanatorium was envisioned by the state of Indiana about 1905. That uh, was part of the crusade against tuberculosis. Tuberculosis was a scourge of the 19th century, actually the scourge of all of human history. And uh, at the turn of the 20th century, they had the science and the technology that they thought they could make a real difference in the treatment of tuberculosis. Uh, so they had a statewide site selection. They were looking for someplace rural uh, because tuberculosis was contagious. Uh, they looked something with a south face, uh, well-drained, uh, good airflow. And they looked all around the state and they settled here in Rockville. Uh, we have a nice, uh, it was, they picked a 540 acre piece and they planned to build in a, a complete self-sufficient town uh, to support the tuberculosis hospital. They had schools, they had stores, they had greenhouses, they had a dairy. Um, everybody who worked here lived here. Uh, the staff didn't commute to and from town. This was a self-contained community. Um, in about 1907, they had picked the site. They uh, claimed several of the pieces through eminent domain and they started construction in 1908. So the uh, hospital was here, the tuberculosis hospital was here and it was known as the Indiana State Sanatorium from 1908 to 1968. Uh, in 1968, or in the late 50s, they cured tuberculosis. And for a while, the hospital became the Indiana Hospital for Chest Diseases, but they realized they didn't need a massive campus out in the middle of nowhere right. for yeah. chest diseases. And so they decided uh, to close the facility. Spent several million dollars building kind of a state-of-the-art uh, nursing home. Uh, they expected the five-story to be assisted living so seniors could live in their own apartments. And then uh, when they needed to move into the proper nursing home. And so they spent, like I said, several million dollars. They got everybody. They hired 150 staff. They're all ready to go. And they're like, all right, please move all of your, close your county nursing home and move everybody in. The guy's like, no, we changed our mind. We're not going to close the nursing home. Yes. And so there they were with a brand new facility and no patients. And nothing, yeah. And they kind of panicked. Um, uh, luck or unluck, as it were, was with them. And a mental hospital in northern Indiana was closing. And so they decided, uh, there was the mental hospital saying, hey, can anyone take like 100, 120 mental patients? And they're like, well, we have this facility that's empty. You wish to send them here. And they're like, yeah, we'll send them there. Yeah, we'll do it. <laughs> and the county was like, you didn't say you're opening a mental hospital. And so there was several years of lawsuits and right. anger. Because the county, they paid for something different. They, they expected something different. Um, and, uh, they, and so it got off to a bad start. Um, when it was the Indiana Sanatorium, it was uh, kind of a place of hope. This is where people fought to get in here. They would write the governor, they'd write their state representatives and say, hey, can I get into the sanatorium? Unfortunately, admittance to the sanatorium was based on the county you lived in. So if you came from a small county, there only might be one or two beds for people that uh, from your county. And if someone lives for four, five, 10, 15 years out here, oh, uh, yeah. that doesn't become available. Initially, they had about an 80% mortality rate the first couple of years. Uh, people would come here and they about 80% of them would die in their first year. Oh. Uh, but after, <coughs> excuse me, after five or six years of being open, they got the annual mortality rate down to about 10%. Okay. And so it was very successful. Um, it really accomplished what they had hoped that it would accomplish. Yeah. Um, they had about 300 patients out here. Uh, they had a children's ward, they had a women's ward, and a men's ward. Um, originally, the children's uh, ward, the children were coming and they weren't expected to live, and so they didn't really teach them a lot. They didn't teach them to speak oh, proper English, yeah. they didn't go to school. And all of a sudden, the children started living and they were suddenly faced with kind of a <laughs> They were of, like, wait. <laughs> wait a second, these children are feral. <laughs> and so they had a kind of a crash program to like teach them how to do stuff. 
one of the things I read in the state archive was they basically took their beds out of their rooms. They went in and gave them a cot, showed them how to set up the cot, and then took the cot apart and said, all right, now it's your turn to put this cot together so you can sleep on it tonight. And the next morning, about half the kids had their cot set up. The other ones were like curled up in the pile of cot oh. pieces on the ground. I was like, oh my gosh, that seems heartrending. Yeah. And they, uh, but they, they got their act together and they built a really a model school out here. Um, and by like 1925, it was probably one of the best schools in Indiana. Oh, cool. Um, the school is no longer here. It was a three-story schoolhouse that used to be right in this Right field. in this little area over yeah. here? It was quite large. Um, uh, the, uh, the other things they built out here, they built a, a large log cabin to teach home economics, how to make beds, how to cook, how to clean. Uh, it was kind of a, a, a living laboratory. Uh, they had greenhouses, they had a dairy. Um, they had everything out here. It was really yeah. self-sufficient. They generated their own electricity. They generated steam. They had their own covered bridge on site to haul coal from the railhead that was about two miles away and so three or four coal trucks a day would drive up here. Oh wow, so they really did have like almost everything that you could yeah. think of. And so uh, the staff all lived here. Um, up ahead on the hill, as you can see it in the dark, um, is the superintendent's residence. It's about 6,000 square feet, built in 1922. It's a beautiful uh, early Art Deco craftsman style house. Okay. Um, built by the state of Indiana. It's a beautiful house. Uh, there's a couple of doctors and nurses bungalows. We're in the process of doing a full restoration right. of the site. And so we're restoring all of the buildings that are still standing. Nice. Up the, the first building that we're going to see coming around the corner up here is going to be the uh, original administration building. It's the first building built during the uh, tuberculosis era. It's where the nurses and doctors lived. It's where they had their exam rooms. And off of that building came two wards, the men's ward and the women's ward. Each about 100 beds. Um, there was no hallways. They were all south facing, big screen porches. And so probably nine, 10 months of the year, every morning they would wheel the patients out into the fresh air and sunshine. Oh. The nice March fresh air and sunshine was probably all of 40 degrees. Yeah. But better than being uh, sunshine really disinfects. Right. So there's, like I said, there's tunnels you can explore. Um, one of the really unique things about the uh, Indiana State Sanatorium is really has three eras of what a hospital would be. Hmm. Um, it has the tuberculosis hospital, 1908. It looks like a grand hotel, 12 foot ceilings, big double staircases, uh, just beautiful architecture. Then you have like the 1980s nursing home. Um, wide hallways, handrails, off pink walls. Yeah, they always seem to have that. <laughs> um, and then you have the five story, which was the mental hospital. And it's very one flew over the cuckoo's nest. Very narrow hallways. Really? Tiny nurses stations. Now that's that really big one, right? Like yes. the, it's the five, is it the, five we call or it is it four? We call it five story because it's five story stone. Okay. Uh, it was originally a dormitory for tuberculosis staff but it was in really pretty good shape after uh, the abandonment of the state. And so okay. they were going to put, um, what's it called? Um, assisted living. I mentioned that a little bit earlier. Um, where we're walking right now, um, there was a three story hospital, probably 80,000 square feet that's been torn down. Uh, we were leveling out the field here and uh, we made a mistake and used the plow that was a little too deep. And I dredged up the past. Oh no! Bricks and rebar and plaster, and it's like, oh, that, oh yeah, that didn't work at all. Like I thought it was <laughs> going to work. And so, um, but the bones of the the place are still here. Over along the, like I say, there's tunnels that used to be the basements, right? Where you can you can't see it much because it's getting dark. Um, uh, up ahead, in about two minutes, we're going to come upon a couple stretched limos. They are from the Lee Allen Bryan Day. Uh, the nursing home and the and the mental hospital were called Lee Allen Bryant after okay. the after their founders. Um, one of the I, I said there's three unique things about several unique property. One is 
it has three eras. It, it really has something from the 50s, something from the, the earliest 20th century, and something from the 80s. That's kind of unique. Um, it has three different purposes, the tuberculosis hospital, the mental hospital, and the nursing home. And the circumstances of it closing have was sudden. It was open, and then one day it was closed. Oh! The sheriff came and locked the door. Um, they got rid of the patients. Uh, and pretty much everything is here as it was left. Huh. The patient rooms still have stuff in them, uh, drawings on the walls, the activity center is still full of games and books. And so there's just a lot of things. If your investigations involve picking up and feeling the stuff that people used, mm -hmm. this is the place for you. Okay, cool. So we enter the grand entrance into the sanatorium, big double wide staircase, uh, 10 foot ceilings, plaster pillars and plaster work up above, kind of the craftsman's level detail on the steps. So we're walking down now towards the tunnels. Um, if you look off to the left there, you can see a lot of the facility looked like that when we got here. Oh, okay, piles yeah. Of stuff. We've taken dumpster after dumpster of trash. Oh my gosh. Broken plaster, but we are trying to save everything of historical significance. Uh, we're trying to leave signs on the wall and that type of stuff. And so down here, Back there is the, the, the morgue of the tuberculosis hospital, but it's still it's yeah. It's still very messy. But this is what the tunnels look like. So the tunnels here go all the way back to where we started. Oh, they don't get that damn. they don't get that big, they don't say this big. Okay. There's lots of spiders. <laughs> I would imagine. In, in the end. Uh, this goes off. It used to go underneath the uh, Men's ward now it goes underneath the nursing home, which okay. is up in a secret room in the nursing home. Nice. We're going to walk out the back here, and you'll see the, the power plant. Uh, very industrial. Once again, I can't thank the state of Indiana enough for all of their mitigation efforts. Still stuff on the two by four. And here we have a uh, an old steam engine driven uh, dynamo to generate electricity. Oh, so so very. We'll Interesting. Be, we'll be restoring the the power plant and uh, allow uh, steampunk weddings. Oh, <laughs> uh, it's my cathedral to steam. <laughs> so um, so you can see like this is the activities room. The activity room is still full of activities. Uh, people's photo albums. Hey, can you identify all the all the different people that were here? So that's the the the, the residents that were here. Oh my gosh! So lots and lots of photos of residences. There's cigarette passes. How many cigarettes <laughs> they can have? And so like all of the stuff that. Uh, Huh. That's here. There's even an old air conditioner. Yep, no power up here, so if you're uh, measuring stuff, but the hallways are long, um, <laughs> the, the beds are still, the rooms are still full of their beds yeah. and their sheets and there's stuff there's in like, the drawers. Yeah, there's stuff everywhere. Yep. So they really did just like pack up and leave. Well, some of them didn't even pack up. They just walked off. They just said, hey, let's go. So last building built is in the building that's in the worst shape as far as uh, the roof. The administration building's got a slate roof. Mm -hmm. The building will disintegrate and the roof will be fine. Uh, but this building, this roof here is suffering. We'll have to get up there this year still. And, uh, it's a tender loving care. Mm -hmm. 
So there was a lot of vandalism in this building, correct? Not a ton. Not um, a ton. Some, some broke it. A lot of broke. People seem to like to break the safety glass. That seems yeah, to, for some reason. They... That seems to be a, a, a positive that. thing that they like to do. We had a movie without a permission filmed after. It's a kind of horror film they're watching. Oh. Are they? Are they really? Uh, you tell me. I don't know. <laughs> so it's a big facility. Yeah. We have over 100,000 feet under roof. Probably 120,000 square feet to explore. See, the thing that makes me nervous is not knowing where I'm going. <laughs> and then I'm like, oh, this place is so big and like... You'll get so lost. Yeah. But there's offices, there's libraries. There's the dining room for the nursing home. All of the dishes and stuff are still here. Service trays. And so we moved, we started at The Shining, kind of a grand hotel, we moved to Stranger Things, and now we're off to, uh, uh, One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest. Oh, nice. And this goes on and on. Here's another dining hall. This is the metal hospital dining hall. And so we moved from the big, wide hallways to the narrow, confined hallways. Now, is this the big brick building? Yes, it's okay. the five story brick building. You can see it's a little bit more oh, claustrophobic. Yeah. People are going to be jumping out of the doors here. And... <laughs> yeah, we <laughs> haven't seen that. This, end this is how you meet your fate in a horror film. Oh, that's okay. All right. So here's like the nursing station, but like I said, they just left everything. The, the cups, the records are still on the walls, but the state is coming to get those. Ha, huh, hopefully we're meeting on Thursday to huh. come get everything. But you can see the cups are still here, the trays, the medicines. The... Everything, yeah. So. That's so crazy. All the complaint numbers, if you have a complaint. If I have a complaint. Make sure you call. I will call. Attention, only registered nurses be on this phone. Oh, shit. <laughs> And then a smoke room, they got tired of painting the ceiling, so they just painted the ceiling brown. Huh. Nothing says mental health like brown ceiling oh, yeah. and red walls. It's again, beds and chairs in the room. Yeah. The holes in the walls are from where they removed asbestos. Okay. The building has been completely remediated. The exit means don't go this way, it's dangerous enough. <laughs> no. It means uh, we have the U.S. Special Forces out here. Okay. Training, and so it tells them not to blow those doors up. I see a car up ahead with someone in the booth. What am I, from Canada? No. <laughs> So it was actually at this moment that I realized that I would not be able to do static cameras tonight because as you can tell from the sped up version of the video, this place is huge and you just keep walking and walking and walking and walking. And I was very concerned that if I had placed something down somewhere that I would not be able to figure out where stuff is. And I'm very used to doing smaller buildings. Um, things are really easy to find and you, you take a tour and you get to feel out the place. But e even the tour for, for this specific place didn't really help me very much. So I was, I was very much so aware that if I put something down, I would probably not be able to find it and maybe forget about it. And I don't want to lose any of my equipment as I just got it. So there will be no static cams for this video. If you're setting, thank you. Can you walk in front of it again? Guys, I'm just setting up. I was actually setting up a static cam. 
I didn't think anything would be going off. And this little guy over here is going off. I haven't even, I've done no introduction or nothing. Um, if you are here, can you talk to me into this device right here for me, please? I would love to know a little bit about you, what your name is, anything that might help me help you. Can you do me a favor and walk in front of this device again? This one right here, just walk, just walk in front of it, just like stand in front of it. And it'll tell me that you're still here and that you wanna communicate with me. Thank you so much. Can you actually stand in front of it and just like stay there for like 10 seconds? Please, just like walk in front of it and just like hold yourself there for a second. I know it's really hard to do. If I brought on another device, would that be beneficial for you? This one might be a little bit easier for you to do. Oh. I don't think that was me. Yeah, I reached across it, it's not me. I also want to point out that this place is really expensive so I actually um, got invited by another group to come here so I'm actually not in the building alone there are four other people who are here um, if I do hear their voices I will point it out um, this is a really big place though so I didn't think it would be a problem are you still here do you want to still communicate I'm gonna use my phone for a little bit to do this Oh, that's not me, right? Um, I don't think I'm close enough. Was I close enough? Oh, maybe that was me. That's not me. That's totally not me. You can see that nobody's over there. Can you set it off again for me? Just stand in front of it. That's all you gotta do. They might not like me. There's a mic on my for the light. All right, cool. So I'm actually gonna turn on the portal device right now. I'm gonna hold this myself. My hair is so frizzy, you guys, because it's really hot here. Um, so I'm just gonna place myself down here. I'm gonna pop myself down and I'm gonna turn on the portal device, see if we get anything through there. I'm gonna sit down, is that okay? Oh, these are probably really dusty. I didn't think about that. Damn. Is that okay with you then? You can, hold on. Still see that nobody's over there. It's just been going off randomly yeah if you want to communicate with me can you turn it on thank you and you held it that is so awesome now i'm not sure if you're experienced with talking to people i'm going to turn this off but I do have an EVP recorder right here, and what that's gonna do is that's gonna record your voice. It's gonna be able to hear you better than I can. 
So if you want to talk into this device, you need to speak loud enough so that way I can hear you. And I'm just going to ask a few questions, okay? Yeah. I'm just going to ask a few questions, okay? And then you can answer like that. So do you want to tell me what your name is? Can you tell me, did you stay here as a patient or did you work here? Are you a male or a female? Do you know what today is? What year it is? Are you, does it make you happy that people come in here and talk to you? I'm going to turn my portal device on real quick. Um, so that way I will be able to communicate with you and I can hear you directly through this. I would love to talk to you. So hold on, let me get everything set up and then I'll start asking questions and you can respond through here. All right, I'm gonna leave it closed. This is my new box. This is a camera, it's a static cam, even though I'm totally in the shot. Um, I'll turn it this way. Oh! Do you wanna come talk to me? Can you tell me your name through this device? I think it said he's coming, but I'm not sure. Do you want to come talk to me? Can you tell me your name, please? That was definitely a female, but I don't know. Can you repeat that? Are you able to talk through this? My hair is so frizzy. Were you a patient here? I'm not hearing too much right now. Do you want to come chat with me? My name's Amber, what's yours?
So there's a lot of ground to cover, uh, a lot of different spaces to go to. So I'm gonna start working my way up and go kind of upstairs, walk around a bit. Does anybody wanna come talk to us? You can come over here and you can touch this over here and it lets me know that you wanna talk. Do you have an activity that you want to play? You can come speak over to this device right here. And I'll be able to catch whatever you say. Did you like spending time in this room? So I guess you don't know what's going on. Hey, you want to know what's going on? I thought you could close the door. Man, yeah, there he is. He's back. They are cute. Can you tell me if you're a patient or if you worked here? Do you know where we're at? Wait there and then just like, oh, glad you. Yes. Oh, so why was the fifth floor so bad? What kind of people were up here? Were they bad people up here? How many spirits are up here? Yeah, but it's like very, very faint. I can't turn that up. It doesn't. Are you still here talking to us? You know, we can hear you, right? If you're here, can you do something for us? Like make a noise or talk to us through this device? Uh, I don't 
Why would we run? We're not afraid of you. See that, yeah. Let's see I heard, like, I, I thought I heard it twice, and now I think I heard it again. Do you keep saying the name Amy? It's a man every time. Though. Why are you up on this floor? Is Amy important to you? Can you say one of our names, please? Through this device over here? It said something in. It said sent at the end. I heard like sent at the end. Do you know where we're at? Do you know what year it is? Email, but I didn't catch what she said. It sounded like a giggle. Really? Yeah. It was just laughing. Does that get out? Maybe? I don't know. Do you want to tell us what was so funny? No. No, I thought I said I don't know. You thought you I said I don't know. Yeah. Why not? That's a nose. Come on. You tell us what your name is? I think she said none of your business, but I'm not sure. I heard that one. You heard that? You heard that. That was like a growl. Yeah. yeah. You heard it? I thought, well, I thought it was because you were moving, but by the time I looked, you were already up. I heard it over there. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Who, who's growl? Is that why you're telling us to run? Is there something bad up here? Idiot. Yeah, I heard that. That's pretty good. Yeah. Are you calling us an idiot because we ain't leave yet? I 
They call you it because it ain't, ain't a word. You're probably so dead here. That was just here now. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Help. Did you hear that? Sound like you help. Help? Yeah. Woman. Who needs yeah. help? How can we help you? He's stuck here. Is there someone making you stay here? It did for a second, and then now it's just going back down. Yeah, it was up to 2.9. Mm. Well, what the hell? When that we yes, I was there. Put a cap on that. Yeah. So you are stuck here. Huh? Who's keeping you here? Somebody force you to come to this place? Can you come over here around these two devices over here? Yeah, if you walk in front of this one, it'll go off and it'll play music for you. All right, guys, if you guys are watching because you need the keyword, you have made it. If you guys want to win a spirit box with a speaker, all you have to do is type in the keyword underneath this video. So in the comment section, just type in the keyword and here is your keyword. Be sure to check my Instagram on August 28th. I will be announcing the winner in the posts. So good luck to everybody and I hope you guys are enjoying the video. If you're enjoying the video, please give this video a thumbs up. All you have to do is just walk right in front of it and it'll go off for you. Again. Thank you. They like 
like that music box. I've only ever been able to get it to go off one other location, and it only went off once. Oh, yeah? Yeah. And it's been to, like, at least six locations by now. I like the music. It's pretty. Can you tell us your name? because we just had it up on the fifth floor too and it sat there for like 20 minutes and didn't go off.
keep setting that off, then you can speak into this device, right? You can tell me your name and maybe why you like the music box so much. Can you hold yourself in front of it and make it go off for like 10 seconds? You got to hold there a little bit longer. I know it's hard, especially because you just used up so much energy. To sure what this is but it does really look like there's some sort of like figure that crosses front in front of the camera I can't tell if it's like some sort of weird like flashlight like shadow play I, I don't know but I did slow it down it looks pretty weird to me at this point I turn on my portal device and I grab my EMF reader and my REM pod and I set them in front of them and I really don't get too many answers through the portal device but I do capture this Oh, there's a little spike for the, oh yeah, see, and the, the millimeter just had a spike of like two something. Yeah. Can you do that again? <laughs> 